For this lesson, we are going to be finding the slope of a line when given two points that are on that line. So you'll notice a very, very important formula to know is why the slope formula, which is always rise over run, but notice it's in the format of y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. When you put your numbers in here and simplify, you will find the slope. When you're using this, you might say, well, where do you get the y2 and the y1 and the x2 and the x1? Well, I am just labeling this as point one, and so this is x1, y1. This is my second point, so it is x2, y2. And now, yes, I do make my students write the equation um, over and over again to find slope so that you do remember because the order of how you're writing that is extremely important. And then all we're going to do to solve this is we're going to substitute in the values for the x's and the y's. So here I see that y2 is a 4, so I'm writing 4, and here's my subtraction sign, and I see that y1 is actually a negative 4. So notice my subtraction sign, my negative 4. Over my x2 is 5 minus a 3. So now, in order to simplify this, you know when you subtract, you always add the opposite. So you end up with a 4 plus 4, which is 8, and a 5 minus 3, which is 2. And we can totally simplify that. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So our slope is equal to a positive 4. And this is your answer. So again, we are going to always make sure we label our points. Point one, x1, y1. Point two, x2, y2. Writing the formula is gonna help me learn it, but it is also going to make sure that I put my numbers in, in the right spots. So looking at this second one, I have y2 is a 5, y1 is a 5, so it's 5 minus 5 over 0 minus 9. Well, when we simplify the numerator, 5 minus 5 is 0, and 0 minus 9 is a negative 9. Whenever you have a 0 in the numerator, the slope for this equation is equal to zero. Only if the zero is in the numerator. All right, well, let's see what question number three holds for us. Again, you do know that I'm going to label x1, y1, x2, y2. You should be saying, I bet she's going to copy the formula. Of course I am, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So now I am going to go ahead and I'm gonna put in my values. Here I get a six and y1 is a seven, so six minus seven. And for my denominator, I have a five minus a six. Looking at this problem, as I work this out, I see six minus seven is a negative one, and five minus six is a negative one, so my slope is equal to negative, and divided by a negative is a positive one. The slope is equal to one. Today we're gonna to be writing an equation 
in slope-intercept form when slope and the y-intercept are given to you. The equation that you must know is y equals mx plus b. The m always stands for the slope, and the b is your y-intercept. So here are two equations, examples. y is equal to 3x plus 4. The slope is 3. The y-intercept is 4. Here, y is equal to 1 half x minus 2. The slope is 1 half. And since it says minus 2, we know the y-intercept is a negative 2. So let's do a few of these when you're given the slope and the y-intercept. If I have a slope of 3 fourths and a y-intercept of 7, the equation for the line is going to be y is equal to 3 fourths x plus 7. Remember, we must always have the letter Y there, and we must always have our letter X. And now, this does look like slope-intercept form. So if I have a slope of 1 half and a Y-intercept, letter B, of a negative 5, the equation for that line would be y is equal to a 1 half x. We would not write plus negative 5. The best way of writing this, because you do not put the two symbols together, is y is equal to 1 half x minus 5. This lesson is writing an equation from a graph. If you notice the first graph that we have here, it is going downhill. So I do know that my slope is going to be negative. When we're writing an equation from a graph, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to locate our y-intercept. So I can see from this graph that b is equal to 2. Now I'm going to, again, my slope is going to go ahead and be negative because it's going downhill, so I'm writing that. And now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to count from one point to the next as I'm going, and then I'm going to write my rise over my run. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4. I've gone down four, and now I'm going over one, two, three. So my slope is a negative four thirds. The equation for the line that is graphed is y is equal to, our slope being negative four thirds, x plus two. It's always important to pay attention to your uh, coordinate plane and how what are the intervals going up. This first one was counting by ones, one, two. This next one, if you notice, our first line doesn't have a number. Our second line has a four. So that means that every line we see, we're actually counting up by twos. So I am going to notice again, this is going to be a positive slope because it's going uphill from left to right. And I'm going to start where my y-intercept is. It's down here. And since this is negative 2, we know that is a negative 4. So my b is equal to a negative 4, my y-intercept. And now... I'm going to go from the two points that are labeled here. And remember, every time I count one space, it is represented by two. So when I go from this point up 
just one space, that's two spaces, and then a half of a space would be three. So I know that my slope is going to be, for the rise, is three. And uh, again, this is up two, over, I mean up one more, three, and now I'm going over two, and a, another one would be three. So it's a three over three slope, which is the same as one. So the equation for this line would be y is equal to x minus four. Remember, there's always an understood one in front of this x, and if you would write that, it would still be right, but the book will not be writing it. The book will be representing it in this way. Given an equation in slope-intercept form, we're going to graph the line. So our first equation is y equals 2 thirds x minus 1. I know this is in slope-intercept form, so my slope, my m, is 2 thirds. Remember, this is rise over run. My y-intercept is a minus 1 because of the subtraction sign. So our steps are this. First, we need to go to the y-intercept, and we are going to plot the point at a negative 1 on the coordinate plane. So right here, I am putting my point at a negative one. That is where my y-intercept is. Now, from that point, I am going to count rise over run. And since this is a positive slope, my mind is telling me my line should be going uphill from left to right. So I'm going to go from my negative one, and I'm going to count up to and over three, one, two, three. And I'm going to count up two and over one, two, three. And usually you put two points above it and two points below it so you can draw a straight line without a ruler if possible. So we're gonna go down two and over one, two, three, and down two again from that point, one, two, and over three. One, two, three. So now I can see from those points that I have, I am able to connect them and draw a pretty straight line without a ruler. That's what the y equals 2 thirds x minus 1 equation would look like. For the next equation that I have here, I'm actually gonna make this y is equal to a negative 2x plus three. So looking at this, I know that my slope is a negative two, and remember, every whole number is over one. So I'm gonna write it as a fraction. My y-intercept is at a positive three because it says plus Three. Thinking about this line now, I see my negative sign right here. So my brain is telling me, oh, it's going to end up going downhill. So as I'm putting my points there, I'm going to make sure that when I'm done, it's going the opposite direction of what the positive slope was. So again, we're gonna start at the y-intercept, which is at a positive three, and we're going to count up two, and when we go to the left, one, we're going a negative one, 
And so again, I'm looking at it, I'm thinking it's gonna end up downhill, but let's do a few more points. It's gonna go up two and over one. And now to graph a few below, because we want it to be able to graph a straight line, we're gonna go down two and over one, and down two more and over one. And now I can see that when I connect, my ordered pairs, that it is indeed a negative slope. Negative slope is going from left to right, downhill, and a positive slope is going uphill from left to right. This lesson is writing an equation of a line in slope intercept form when given two points on the line. Our two points are a negative six and one. Notice it's labeled x1, y1, first point. The second point is negative three and two. Here is x2 and y2. We're gonna use the slope formula because in order to graph the line, we're going to, or not graph the line, write the equation y equals mx plus b we must find the slope and we must find the y-intercept. So for the first step, we're finding the slope. Let's substitute in the values. We have a two minus a one and a negative three subtraction sign minus and x one is a negative six. And sorry, that's supposed to be a negative sign. So when we subtract, it's two minus one is one, and we're adding the opposite here. So we end up with a negative three plus six, which is three. So now we found our first thing. Our slope is equal to one third. We're gonna choose only one of those lines in order to go ahead and to find our letter B. So I'm just gonna circle the first one, and I'm putting that point value down here. So I know that these are the values that I am going to need to plug in to my equation. So I'm writing Y equals MX plus B. I am gonna substitute in a one for the Y, a one third for the X, I mean the slope, and the X is going to be a negative six plus B. So here we are finding letter B, which is our Y intercept. Those are our two steps. So when I multiply one third times a negative six, I end up with a negative two plus B, and I have to add two to both sides in order to move the numbers together, and B is equal to three. So our equation in slope-intercept form will be Y equals one-third X plus three. Two easy steps will end up giving you the equation of the line. In this lesson, we're changing point slope form of a line to slope intercept form. So we're going to make this equation, which is in point slope, look like y equals mx plus b. That way I will know that it's in slope intercept form. So the first thing we do, order of operations, we always have to multiply your distrib for your distributive property. So y minus three is equal to a four x plus four. We know in order to get it in slope intercept form, I have to bring my number to this other side because the y must be alone. So y equals 4x plus 7. 
And that actually is now in slope intercept form. The slope intercept form, and where did we start? We started in point slope form. All right, so let's try another one. I have y minus seven is equal to two times the quantity of x plus three. Again, we're gonna start with the distributive property. So y plus seven is equal to a two x plus six. I'm going to, again, get it into y equals mx plus b form, so that means the seven has to move to the other side, so I need to a pair of opposites to cancel it out. So I get y is equal to a 2x. So this is a plus 6 minus 7 is equal to a negative 1. Again, this is our slope-intercept form, and we started here with point-slope form. This lesson involves standard form of a line, and the format for it is AX plus BY is equal to C. There are two things that you really need to remember. No fractions or decimals are allowed, and A must be a positive number. So an example for it would be 3X plus 2y equals a negative 12. Our c can be negative, remember, just the x cannot, and there are no fractions or decimals, so we're good. Non-examples would be, here we have a negative 2x plus y equals a negative 12. Notice, we have a negative leader. We would have to divide everything by a negative one to make it positive. We'll be doing this in a minute. And also here, you have 1 half x plus 7y equals 16. There are no fractions allowed. So when we're done, we will have an equation of a line that looks like this in standard form. So let's look at number one. For number one, it's pretty much one simple step. We see that the x needs to get to the other side of the equation, and it really needs to be in front of the y. So I'm going to write 3x plus y is equal to, notice that cancels out, and that's plus 6, so it's just a 6 there. Standard form, no fractions, no decimals, a positive number in the front. When we're looking at the next one, y equals 2x plus 5, I'm going to subtract my 2x to get it to the other side. So I have a negative 2x plus y equals 5. Remember we said we don't want to have a negative leader. Our first number with letter A must be positive. So I'm just gonna divide everything by a negative one, and what it does, it actually changes the sign that you have up above. So negative two divided by negative one is two x. There's our positive number. We have a positive one divided by a negative one, and that would be a negative y. Remember, y was positive, it just turned the opposite. And here, yes, we're dividing everything by a negative 1. So 5 divided by negative 1 is equal to a negative 5. This is the equation in correct standard form, going from slope-intercept form to standard form. Let's look at the last one. Uh-oh, I see that I have a fraction. Well, I know that if I have the number 1 half, and I want to make it into a whole number, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of it, and 1 half times 2 is actually equal to 2 over 2, which is the same as 1. So when I am looking at this problem, I know that I have to multiply everything, and I'm going to do it in another color so it really shows out, 
I'm going to multiply everything by the whole number 2. You have to do each term. We call these terms. Multiply them by 2. So we can see that the 2's do cancel out, and I end up with a 2y equals an x plus 8. Well, there's still something wrong. I know that my x belongs in the front, ax plus by equals c. So I am going to go ahead and I am bringing my x to the other side of the equation. So I have a negative x plus 2y equals 8. They're all whole numbers now, so I'm okay, no decimals, but oh no. There's a negative in front of my x, and that's like a negative 1. So I have to divide everything by negative 1 because our front variable with x must be positive. So negative 1 divided by negative 1 is positive 1, so I'm just going to write x. 2 divided by a negative 1 is a negative 2, so I'm going to write minus 2y, and 8 divided by negative 1 is a negative 8. All of these equations now are written in standard form. There's no decimals, no fractions, and the beginning number is definitely a positive number. This lesson is about changing an equation to slope-intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. If we're given an equation in standard form, which looks like 2x minus y equals 9, we need to know that we're going to have to get it in slope-intercept form, if the directions tell us to. And so I am going to go ahead and subtract the 2x from both sides of the equation. That's minus y now becomes a negative y equals negative 2x plus 9. Remember, we must have just y equals mx plus b. So because there is a negative y, there is an imaginary 1 there. I'm going to divide everything by a negative 1. And so as I'm looking at my equation now, I end up with y equals a 2x because I'm dividing by a negative, and I had a negative, so it makes it a positive 2x. And now, because I have a plus 9 and a mi dividing by a negative 1, it is a minus 9. So the equation written in slope-intercept form is y is equal to 2x minus 9. Let's try another equation. So what if we had 5x plus y equals a negative 5? Well, I know that, again, the x must be on the other side of the equation, so I will be subtracting my 5x from both sides of the equation, which we can see this cancels out, and I end up getting y equals a negative 5x minus 5. And that is our equation in just one easy step, writing it in slope-intercept form. Let's try another one where I would have um, x plus 3y equals a negative 15. Okay, again, to change it to standard slope-intercept form, from standard form, 
I am subtracting my x to the other side of the equation, so it is 3y, once the x cancels out, equals a negative x minus 15. Well, I know that I am not done because I cannot have that 3 with the y, and I need to divide everything by a 3 because that is the coefficient of the y. So you might say to yourself, well, how do I get slope from this equation? Well, remember, a variable that doesn't have a number in front of it always has an understood one there. So now I know that y is going to be equal to, and I just can now pull out this fraction. It's a negative 1 third x minus 5. And the reason it is a minus 5, because as we divide a negative 15, yes, we take that sign to the 15, and a 3, we do get a minus 5. So the equation in slope-intercept form is y is equal to negative 1 third x minus 5. This lesson is about equations of parallel lines. Things to remember, parallel lines must have the same slope. And the equation must be in y equals mx plus b form in order to be able to see the slope and the y-intercept. So in this lesson, y equals mx plus b is a very important equation. So let's look at some examples of parallel lines. We have y is equal to 3x plus 6, and y is equal to a negative 3x minus 2. Well, looking at those lines, I see the slopes are the same. The only thing that is different would be your y-intercepts. Looking at a second example that I actually have graphed off to the side here, y is equal to 1 half x plus 6, and y is equal to 1 half x plus 2. So again, we know they are parallel because they have the same slope, but notice the y-intercepts are different. So the purple line is your first equation where it crosses the y-axis at a 6, and the second equation is the blue line where we can see the y-intercept is at a 2. So we know parallel lines will never meet. Well, what happens if you're given a problem such as this, where it says, write an equation of a line that is parallel to y equals a negative 2x plus 5, and goes through the point 1, 2. Well, let's go ahead and mark the text. So we know that we want to find a line that is parallel to this given line. We know that we are going to go ahead and have it go through point 1 and 2 very important bits of information. So I'm going to, right away, I see that my slope for y equals a negative 2x plus 5 is a negative 2. So I'm going to write that information down. m is equal to a negative 2. And I'm going to write down the other information they gave me about this point. So it it's going to go through our new line point 1 and 2. When I'm going to try to find now, remember, it's y equals mx plus b is the format. We know the slope. We need to find, we do not know, our letter b. 
And how we find where it crosses the y-axis is we're going to substitute in these values that have been given to us to find our letter B. So let's do that. Notice I labeled my ordered pair so I don't make a mistake. My 2 is my y. My slope is a negative 2. x is 1. And now I don't know my letter B. And that's why I have gone ahead and set this information up. So 2 is equal to a negative 2 plus B. We know we must get the variable alone, so I'm going to add 2 to both sides. So B is equal to 4. Remember, B is our y-intercept. So now we do have our slope, we have our y-intercept, and we know when we have the equation y equals mx plus b, our y will always be there. Our slope we have as a negative 2, and our x will always be there. And now since b is a 4, we are going to write plus 4. So the two lines that are parallel to each other are y is equal to a negative 2x plus 5. That was given. And the answer that we found, y is equal to a negative 2x plus 4. Again, the slopes are the same. The y-intercepts are different. This is the answer to the problem that was given to us. For this lesson, we're going to be talking about equations of perpendicular lines. There are a few things that we do need to remember. First of all, the equations must be in y equals mx plus b form, where we see the m is a slope, just a reminder, and the b is the y-intercept. Also, perpendicular lines have negative reciprocal slopes. So let's look at two examples so that we can see what do negative reciprocal slopes look like. With these two equations, notice I have y equals 2 thirds x plus 2, and y equals a negative 2 thirds x plus 7. Well, I am looking at the slopes here, and notice they are reciprocals of each other. And when we say negative reciprocals, we are saying they're actually their opposites. So here we have a positive slope, and here we have a negative slope. Let's look at the other example. y is equal to a negative 2x plus 2, and y is equal to a 1 half x minus 1. I'm going to box my slopes. Here we start off with a negative 2, and notice that, you know, the negative 2 always has an understood 1 under it. So this slope of a line that would be perpendicular to negative 2x plus 2 would have a slope of 1 half. And if you look over to the side, here is our first line, graphed in blue. The y equals negative 2x plus 2. And the one graphed in purple is the second one with a positive slope. Y is equal to 1 half X minus 1. And we do see that we know that red box means that those lines do intersect and they are perpendicular to each other. Well, what happens if you're given a problem that says write an equation of a line that passes through point negative 3, 3, and is perpendicular to line y is equal to 1 fourth x minus 3. Well, let's mark our text. So we have an equation of a line that passes through this point, and I'm going to label it my x and my y. That's extremely important. It must be perpendicular to this given line. So we're going to start off, and we're going to have to find our slope, and we're going to have to find letter B 
in order to write the equation in y equals mx plus b form. So looking at the equation that is given to us right here, that slope is 1 4. Well, if I want the new slope for my perpendicular line, it's going to be m is equal to the reciprocal of 1 4 is a 4. And remember, it needs to be a negative reciprocal or the opposite of what is given. So my new slope is negative 4. I do, I'm going to list my point right down here so I have everything in front of me in order to be able to find the equation of a line that is perpendicular to y equals 1 fourth x minus 3. So I'm going to write y is equal to mx plus b. And in order to find b, we're going to use these three values and substitute it into the y equals mx plus b equation. So again, this is my x, this is my y. I love to label it so I don't confuse them. So 3 is equal to, remember, the new slope is a negative 4 times our x is a negative 3 plus b. I have everything I need to be able to find my letter B. So 3 is equal to 12 when we multiply these plus B. And I know that in order to get the variable alone, I need to move it to the other side. So my Y-intercept or my letter B, 3 minus 12 is a negative 9. Again, key information to be able to write my new equation of a line that is perpendicular to what is given is right there. So we're um, writing y equals mx plus b because I must always, remember when I put a cloud, keep that in my mind. Well, you always write the letter y. Our new slope is a negative 4. You always write the letter x. And our b is a negative 9. So even though there's a plus sign there, since it's negative, I'm going to write minus 9. So the answer to this problem as far as what equation of a line would be perpendicular to the one they gave us, this is our answer. If this video was helpful to you today, please add a like, comment, and most importantly, subscribe for more Math with Marsha. See you again soon.